Do I need the gun? That depends on your definition of safe sex. If there's anything you would like, anything at all. Well, I had lunch, but I seem to have missed dessert. Bond. James Bond. James Bond is without a doubt one of the most iconic characters in movie history. And beyond that, he's a character that sparked the imagination of just about any man who's ever seen him on screen. I mean, who wouldn't want to have the game of James Bond? But just what is it that makes the Bond character so charismatic, so attractive? What can we learn from it? And would it actually work in the real world? I'm going to look at two James Bond scenes and explore what he does well, why it works, how realistic it is right now. The first scene I want to look at is a cold pickup scene, but with a twist. See, in this case, James Bond has just won the car in a poker game of this woman's husband. And so he shows up with the car. She thinks he's her husband for a minute. It creates a little bit of awkwardness, and then they go from there. So he's starting the approach with a little bit of uniqueness and in some ways a little bit of advantage, but then on the other hand, a little bit of disadvantage because the woman is married. So we're going to see how he handles that situation right now. My mistake. Can I give you a lift home? That would really send him over the edge. I'm afraid I'm not that cruel. She's not literally saying that um, the husband, her not being that cruel to the husband is the only reason why she wouldn't go with him. But James Bond is going to misinterpret, very important game technique, he's going to misinterpret that that's the reason behind the decision. And he's going to take the most favorable possible sort of framing for himself, right? The other thing he's going to do is he's going to add a little bit of wit and he's going to um, kind of do a, a turn of phrase, right? So instead of arguing against the thing directly, arguing against you should come home with me or you should take the ride home with me, instead he argues against whether or not she's that cruel, right? So watch his response. I'm afraid I'm not that cruel. Well, perhaps you just had to practice. And so he's at least putting himself in a position to maybe be in the game. Not to say that this would work 100% in the real world. It's very kind of long odds but at least has some plausibility and he's at least done some things relatively right. So typically, if you try for a close and you don't get it, you should back off, build the interaction more and go for a close again. Um, however, any time that you do go for a close, there's a chance of it working. And to a certain extent, if you do double down, it is a form of solid frame control and it's a form of high value that can work. It's just very hit or miss. You're, ba you're basically, it's like a baseball metaphor. You're essentially swinging for the fences. You're either gonna hit a home run or you're gonna strike out. So it's not the highest percentage way to go, but it does have you know some chance of working and it is very confident. Um, so it does have that in its favor. Perhaps. What about a drink in my place? Your place? Is it close? Very. And most men, would not ask again. Most men, once they get rejected once, will just completely give up. He is actually, you know, he's actually upping the ante because giving her a ride home versus asking for a drink at his place, he's actually asking for something even bigger. So this is a very go big or go home moment and it's technically an error in game, but it is an error that has a chance of working. One drink. That is perhaps the most important lesson from a learning perspective in the entire scene. There's a principle in sales and a principle in game, which is once you make the offer, once you ask for the order, once you try and close, just shut up. There's this idea that once you've asked for the order, whoever talks next loses in sales, right? Whoever talk, if they talk next, they've bought it. If you talk next, you're gonna have to resell it. So when there's a chance that it could work, sit there, let the tension do its business, let them, let them figure it out, let them make their decision. And so sitting in the tension, being confident, not trying to over justify is very critical. And I see guys get this wrong all the time. Guys will put out an offer, put out a suggestion, and then if there's a little pause or a little tension, they'll start over justifying or explaining, or worse yet, they'll back down and take the suggestion away before the girl's even had a chance to make a decision. So in terms of being confident, in terms of going for it, um, once you've made the close and hopefully you've set the groundwork properly and things are looking good when you do go for the close, then you just be quiet. And while this is kind of a high risk, high reward approach in general, once she said, is your place close, you should think you're doing very well and you're in a winning position. And so very close silence, let her decide that silence is absolutely critical. And, um, we talk about verbal game a lot. One big part of verbal game is the silences, the pauses between what you say, not just what you say. So looking at this scene overall, what did he do well? Um, he was very confident. He, he created a good opportunity for himself based on the, the setting and the logistics and the timing of the approach. 
Um, he passed the shit test in the sense of not answering it directly and in the sense of not begging and pleading and persuading, but also not doing anything low value. He technically did try to close way too fast, and then he did double down on a failed close, which are typically bad moves in game, but this is a unique situation where he is riding very much, like his entire approach is based on the idea that the girl will have an emotional response to the, the fact that he's kind of um, beaten her husband and she's angry at her husband and stuff like that. So given all that, it's not a terrible way to go. Um, and it certainly does have a chance of working. Um, so is it plausible? Yes. Is it high value? Yes. Would it actually work in the real world? Relatively low percentage, but it is definitely possible. This next scene is a bit of a different one in terms of what you might expect me to break down. Typically when dating coaches break down scenes from particularly James Bond, but movies in general, they're usually breaking down the pickup scenes. This is a scene that's not a pickup scene, but it does highlight a lot of the attractiveness of James Bond. It also highlights an area of game I get asked about a ton and that most guys get drastically, dramatically wrong. So I really wanted to use this scene as a good example. Um, so this is a scene um, where James Bond is with a girl that he's already had a relationship with. He's already in an intimate relationship and she's being kind of lovey-dovey towards him and he's actually gaming within the relationship. He's being a high value guy um, while still showing interest, while still being a part of the relationship. And guys ask this question all the time. How do I, you know, you know, once a girl knows that I like her, once I've always slept with her, how do I be unavailable? How do I be difficult? How do I keep her chasing? Um, and this scene is a great example of how to do all of that. So let's have a look. You're right. I can't lose this way, can you? Every time I do, you look at me as if you haven't seen me in years. Me feel reborn. If you'd just been born, wouldn't you be naked? Normally, if you said, you know, if you'd just been reborn, you'd be naked, that would come off as a very blatant sexual advance. That'd come off as very forward, very try hard. It would come off as being very available in a pickup situation, perhaps even needy. However, what I'm going to say to you that might surprise you is this is actually. Not really a disqualifier, but it's a push away. This is actually a push away in this context. How can it be that making what essentially is a sexual advance or bringing up the topic of sex is a push away? Well, here's why. What just came before? She was saying something very lovey-dovey and intimate and romantic. And then he just ignored all of that. Oh, we have a connection. Oh, we're amazing together. Oh, we have this beautiful experience and just focused on the sexual part of it. And this really highlights something in the relationship dynamic between men and women, which is that typically um, winning biologically for a man is having sex, right? Spreading the seed, um, at least from an evolutionary perspective. From a, from a woman's perspective, winning evolutionary biologically is keeping the high quality man around so we can, she can have someone to raise the child. So the lovey-dovey romantic, we're meant to be each other, we have a, a connection kind of thing, that is the escalation for the woman. Whereas keeping it just focused on sex, just as like a hookup kind of a thing, is more of the, um, the man being in charge and power in the relationship. And so when he takes the lovey-dovey thing and just focuses on the sexual thing in a playful way, not in a crass way, not in a like, I wanna have sex with you right now and we have to do only that kind of way, but just you know keeping it focused on that and keeping it playfully sexual as opposed to all deep and sincere and like you know romantic-y, he's actually de-escalating it. He's actually being playful. And this is something a lot of guys miss. Like a lot of guys think that like, once you're in a relationship with a girl for like months and months and months, you have to like act like you don't want to have sex with her. That's fucking ridiculous, right? Um, it's fine to want to have sex with a girl. You should want to have sex with your girlfriend. That's completely normal and good. Um, but what you shouldn't do is that whole like, oh, we're soulmates, we're lovey-dovey, et cetera. You should give her a little shit on that. You should make her work for that. So at every point in the relationship, there's kind of where you're at and then where she'd like to push it to. And being kind of unavailable or being someone she can chase just has to do with not giving her that thing she's pushing for. But as you get more and more, and in, more and intimate in the relationship, that is pushed further and further along and the thing you're leaving her to chase, the thing you're denying or the thing you're make, being difficult about or, or being a little gamey or playful about is something further and further along and that's completely fine, but you never drop the game entirely. And also hopefully you can see how within the context of sex meaning one thing, relationship meaning another, taking this very intimate relationship -y thing and, and mentioning something a little bit sexual in a playful way is kind of de-escalating that progression in the relationship in a way. You have me then. You can have me anywhere. I can. Yeah, here, there, anywhere you like. Does this mean that you're 
warming to me. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. It's just that not so long ago I would have described your feelings towards me as, um... Uh, I'm trying to think of a better word than loathing. I'm afraid I'm a complicated woman. That is something to be afraid of. So we have James Bond doing a couple of things here. Um, firstly, he's once again de-escalating because she's just said something that's very forward, very much coming on to him. You know, you can have me anywhere. Um, and his response is, um, does this mean you're warming to me? So he's, he's downgrading it, downplaying it very significantly. But he's also pointing out that she is logically into him, right? She's t he's taking this kind of emotional nebulous thing and making it something tangible and logical, which is a very big step you want to be doing in a relationship. Also later on on a date, right? Once you're on a date and you've started making out with a girl, you clearly like each other. You want to get that logical affirmation where she says she likes you. She says she's into you. She says she's falling for you. That's going to make everything so much easier when she's made that logical choice as opposed to an emotional one. Because emotions, you know, fluctuate and fade. Logic is a commitment that lasts. So that's the first thing is he's getting logical. But the second thing is that um, he's pointing out that before she didn't like him. Again, pointing out a time when they weren't together, putting up some kind of roadblocks, putting up some kind of obstacles, getting in the way, etc. And then finally, what does he do? He ends it with a little wordplay, right? She says, I'm afraid I'm a complicated woman, which is a British way of saying like, you know, it turns out or unfortunately, right? Um, but then he takes the word afraid and said, that is something to be afraid of. So he's giving her a little bit of a shit, a little bit of a, a push away, disqualified backhanded compliment, right? It's just a little bit of wordplay. It's not a necessary thing, but it's a little addition, a little twist that makes things more fun, that makes things more playful. And again, it's putting up these little barriers. Is he into her? Yes, clearly. But she, at least interactively, is more into him than, she, than he is into her. And that's the very, very important thing in a relationship. At any point in the relationship, one person is more into the other than the other is into them. And it doesn't matter what the absolute amount is, it matters what the relative amount is. So here, he's clearly very into her. There's a lot of intimacy, there's a lot of positivity and flirtation and, and romanticism on both parts, but hers is greater than his. And that's the key thing to keep in mind when you're on the later stages of a date and things are going well, when you're in a relationship and things are going well. And this is a part of a game that doesn't get talked about a lot, and it definitely doesn't get illustrated a lot. So I think this is a great illustration, a great example of it, and definitely something that you can learn from. How plausible and how realistic is all this? Well, I would say in terms of being an attractive person, an attractive character, Daniel Craig and his writers have done a very good job of that. They've done a very good job of encapsulating him as flirtatious, fun, playful, confident, um, knowing how to at least go for a close, if not exactly calibrated in every situation. So there's a lot of really, really positive qualities. Now, how plausible is James Bond overall in the real world? Well, um, he has a couple things in his favor, right? Um, he has what uh, we used to joke around about in, in movies as we, we called the, the life-saving DHV. You know, when you save the world, there is a certain amount of value and a certain amount of prestige and like sexual prowess associated with that. So he definitely has that going on in his favor. The fact that he saved the girl's life or saved the world doesn't hurt in a lot of cases. So that's very positive. He's also put in a lot of situations where he's meeting in non-cold scenarios. Um, so that definitely happens. And I do have one other kind of critique of all the James Bond scenes, which is the same critique I have of many scenes in Hollywood, which is they tend to skip around. Like they'll show a few one-liners right at the start and then they'll show the end, but they don't show all the stuff in the middle, which is really where the game is played. But in terms of what he's conveying, is he being an attractive person? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yes. And I think that is why he is so compelling as a character. And I think that's why this James Bond idea and character has been so iconographic and so um, such a good um, kind of you know draw for Hollywood for so long and such an inspiration to so many men. So there are a lot of things you can take, mainly from his behaviors, from his attitudes, from the ex exact scenarios. Probably not. The scenarios are a bit contrived, but the character within the scenarios is definitely an attractive one. So I hope you liked that video and that little glimpse into the verbal game of James Bond. As you may know, you've probably heard, um, we are coming out with the verbal game program very, very soon, and there'll be a lot more in-depth look at the words you say, the way you deliver it, how you can affect exactly how the girl's thinking, feeling, and acting from moment to moment with the words you say and the words you don't say in some cases. Um, for more on that, check it out at verbalgameacademy.com. There's also a very long infield video you can download for free and check out. You're going to learn a lot from that and you're going to learn a lot from the program. So hopefully we'll see you there and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.